So good evening or good morning, everyone. So um, let's start the next talk. So uh, we're happy to have uh, Professor Yang Xiaokui from uh, Tsinghua University. He will talk about uh, RC positivity and the geometry of complex manifolds. Yes. Thank you for the invitation. It's my great honor to give this talk. So today, my, the title of my talk is about RC positivity and the geometry of complex manifolds. Okay, so let's recall some basic stuff. So suppose X here is a compact complex manifold and E is a Hermitian vector bundle. It's well known that there is a unique collection, it's called the chain collection, which is compatible with the complex structure and also the Hermitian metric. And then we can write down this curvature by using local correlates it looks like, like this, it's well known. And so in the particular case, it is a tangent holomorphic tangent bundle of a complex manifold. We can write down the curvature tensor, which is the standard one. And we have many curvature notions in differential geometry and also in algebraic geometry here. We just recall some basic one. The first one is like the holomorphic bisection curvature. That means you have two directions like here, C and the eta. This pairing is positive for long zero E time and KC. If it's one direction, then it's called a positive holomorphic sectional curvature. And we also have the rich curvature just because uh, the metric is not necessarily killer. So we can write down the contraction is the rich curvature. Similarly, we have the scalar curvature, it's the trace of this rich curvature. A Hermitian metric is killer, it's well known that it's like D closed. Okay, this is about the basic curvature notions in differential geometry. So we also have some curvature notions in analytic geometry. So here X is a compact complex manifold. L is a line bundle. If it, its curvature is positive as a one-one form, it's called positive or equivalently, we call it ample. Okay. It's called an F, means for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a Hermitian metric H epsilon, which depends on epsilon, such that its curvature is bounded from below and is very close to zero. Now, if we take limit and that epsilon goes to zero, this another notion called the soda effective means there exists a possibly singular metric such that its curvature is a positive in the sense of currents. These are all about Nine bundles for vector bundle, it is standard that it's called ample positive NAF, strict NAF, something like that. So, the effective we can define is topological line bundle have such properties. Okay, this is about the analytical side. There is a natural question, so let's summarize that. So, in differential geometry, we have a positivity or negativity for holomorphic bisection curvature holomorphic section curvature, rich curvature, scalar curvature, or some other curvatures. And in algebraic geometry, we have amplis, nephlis, so the effectless of cotangent bundle, tangent bundle. Here, Kx is the canonical line, band, canonical line bundle. And the K, Kx inverse, here it is the anti-canonical line bundle. And we also have more positivity in algebraic geometry. It's well known that, for instance, the first one is called the unit root, means it's covered by rational curves. Here, rational curve means the holomorphic image of the P, CP1. The second one is called the rationally connected, means any two points can be connected by some rational curve. Here, we're working, we're working on, on C, okay? The field is C. The third one is called the funnel. There are many equivalent definitions. Here, we just use this, the simple one, means the first chain class is positive. It is a classical and a basic question that find the relations between algebraic geometry and in notions in differential geometry. Okay, this is a basic starting point. So let's recall some well-known facts and the classical facts. We know here the first one is about the equivalence of tangent bundle. It says that if the holomorphic tangent bundle is ample, then it's equivalent to say that it has a killer or Hermitian metric such that it is, has a positive holomorphic bisection curvature. Indeed, in this case, X is 
as morphic to the standard projective space Pn. Okay, here there are many works on this direction. For instance, the serial solution to the well-known Frank conjecture. It says that if the compact killer manifold with particle morphic section curvature then is like Pn, and the Morris solution to the Hasjorn conjecture, if the holomorphic tangent bundle is ample, then it's Pn. The method now is a very important and very useful method in algebraic geometry. I think there are many experts in this talk. And there are many further uh, generalizations. Probably every geometer has a theorem in, this, in the same spirit. So I cannot list all the results, but I just list some some classical one, like the uniformization theorem of compact killer manifold with semi positive holomorphic bisection curvature by Bandu for A equals three and a general case for by Mock. And also the structure theorem for projective manifold with nef tangent bundle. This done by Yao for the surface case, Jen for the threefold case and the general case by the MIEP now stay there. This is a very clean picture. Okay, this is about the holomorphic tangent bundle case. Let's turn to the rich curvature case. It is well known that we have many talks about this, like the, our pre previous talk by Professor Hashimoto. It's well known that the rich curvature represents the first chain class of the manifold. The well known Kodaira embedding theorem says that. For a live band L, it is ample if and only if it has a smooth metric with positive rich, uh, positive rich curvature or positive curvature. So for the ma manifold version, uh, we need to solve some kind of Mojami equation. Uh, for instance, if the first chain class is negative or Kx is ample, it's equivalent to that X has a smooth killer metric with negative rich curvature or it is a killer Einstein manifold of general type. If the manifold is final, that means the K inverse is ample. It has a killer metric with the rich curvature positive. If the killer manifold has zero first chain class, this equivalent to X has a rich curvature, uh, rich, a killer metric with rich zero. Okay, this is well known, okay. This picture is clean. The left-hand side is algebraic geometry or the right-hand side is different differential geometry. Okay, let's look at the holomorphic sectional case. For the holomorphic sectional case, uh, there is a well-known conjecture in 1970s given by, proposed by Professor Yao. It states that if X is a compact killer manifold, it has a killer metric with negative holomorphic sectional curvature, then it should be projective and it is a killer Einstein manifold of general type means the first chain class is negative. Uh, it's proved by Wang for dimension two and here one for dimension three. Recently, there is a breakthrough work given by Da Ming Wu and also Yao. It says that if X omega is a compact projection manifold with negative holomorphic section curvature, then its first chain class must be negative. Let's go through briefly the ideas of the proof. So the first, the first step is the standard Schwarzenegger. It's well known that if a compact complex manifold has non-positive holomorphic section curvature, it's well known that it has no rational curve. That means the P1, it has no holomorphic P1. And then the next step by Morris results, if it is a projective manifold and it has no rational curve, then the canonical line bundle must be NEF. In this case, and Wu and Yao use the Mundial equation method can prove that if the first chain class is NEF, then they can show the first chain class or Kx is big. That means the top intersection number is positive. The last stop, the last step is the by, by the relative cone theorem, you said that if the Kx is big and Kx has no rational curve, then the first the chain class must be negative or Kx is ample. This is the uh, general idea of the proof. So in the first the proof, they use Morris theorem. <clears throat> that, that means the step two. So by using Wiel's idea, we do some perturbation 
And by path and Morris theory, we can show that this is the joint work with Valentino Cusati. This is a very straightforward and uh, it's a perturbation of Yaw's method. So we can show that if X omega is a compact killer manifold with non-positive holomorphic section the curvature, then we can show the analytical lab bundle is enough. We know there are many manifolds, non-killer manifolds, uh, non-projective manifolds can have a long positive holomorphic section in the curvature, but they are not projective. For example, the Gilbert torus, they are all this type. In this case, at least so far, Morris theory cannot apply in our situation. And so we can apply we also result stated before, and we can settle Yaw's conjecture down in the four generality means in the killer case. So we can sit here. So if X omega is a compact killer manifold, if it has negative holomorphic section the curvature, then X is projective and first the chain class is negative. It's well known that the negativity or quasi-negativity is a global condi condition. Means if it has a negative uh, section of curvature, uh, section of curvature, the result is true. And then probably we can do the same thing in the quasi-negative case. In this case, the Devaro, Chopali, and Wu Yao can prove a more general result that if the holomorphic section curvature is quasi-negative, means it is non-positive and strictly negative at some point. Then they can show X is projective and KX is ample. We need to mention that there are many further works by many mathematicians like some generalizations, Mahinger, Lu, Nomura, and Zhang, and some mathematicians. Okay. This is about the part of negative holomorphic section of curvature. Okay, let's turn to a positive case. Uh, in his problem section, Yao proposed the following conjecture. It's like a, something that's very similar to the case of negative holomorphic section of curvature, but they are actually different style. So Yao conjecture that, let X be a compact killer manifold if X has positive holomorphic section of curvature, the matrix is killer, then X should be projective and it is rationally connected. That means any two points can be connected by some rational curve. Okay. This is about the conjecture. So recently, I just proposed a, a simple notion called RC positivity, which we will introduce later for, for ab abstract vector bundles and use some conformal method in non-killer geometry, we can prove this conjecture that indeed in this case, if a compact killer manifold with positive holomorphic section curvature, then it must be projective and rationally connected. We will go through the proof of this result briefly later. Okay. Why? I mean, uh, I mentioned that this conjecture is not the due of the previous conjecture. I mean, we can see by using this kind of example, note that now his work surface in this type, here is O direct sum with O10. It is very easy to construct a killer matrix with a positive holomorphic section curvature, but we can show that the anti canonical line bundle is enough. And so the anti canonical line bundle is, is not ample. This is quite different, okay? In the previous conjecture, yeah, in the whole negative holomorphic section of cur curvature case, the first chain class is negative. In this case, the first chain class is not necessarily positive. Okay. This is the difference. So recently, by using the idea of RC positivity and some analytical method, Professor Masimura can generalize this result to project manifolds with quasi positive holomorphic section curvature and give us structural theorem for a projective manifold with non positive holomorphic section curvature, which is very similar to the work of um, Mock and also Dama Yi, Peter Nell, Slater, and Jun Yan Cao. Okay, but for the killer case, means okay, if a, it is a killer manifold with quasi positive holomorphic section curvature, is X projective? and the rationally connected, it is still open. Okay, this is about the positive holomorphic section of curvature. Okay, let's go back to uh, the rich curvature case or the canonical lab bundle case. 
Let's recall the result given by Seo Yao. It states that if it has particle holomorphic section the curvature, then it must contain a rational curve. And by Morris results, if the canonical lie bundle Kx is not enough, then X must contain a rational curve. Okay, this, these two results uh, we will use later, okay. Uh, the fundamental results are characterization of unifold manifold is given by Boxon, Dema Yipao, and Pitnell. Probably it is put on archive on 2003, but published in 2012. It states that if X is unit root, if and only if the canonical line bundle is not so effective, Okay, one part is obvious, okay? We can say that clearly. Okay, those results we were used essentially in our proof. So which we will not mention later, okay? So let's go to a baby version of RC positivity. Okay, a nine bundle L is called RC positive. That means it has a smooth Fermi matrix such that its rich curvature means the negative lead bar lock, it has at least one positive angle value everywhere, okay? We say before, if it has a positive rich curvature means the rich curvature is a positive definite matrix, but here the matrix are for RC positive, the matrix here we just require it has at least one positive angle value everywhere, okay? This notion appears in literature by many different names. For example, some guy called it one positive or called M minus one positive. Here N is the complex dimension of the complex manifold. Here, why I call it RC positive, we will see later, okay? Let's recall your results. It says that X is final, then if and only if, X is final if and only if it has a Hermitian matrix omega such that the rich omega is a positive or it has n positive angle values. Uh, we obtain an analog for uniform manifolds means a metric characterization for uniform manifolds. It says that a projective manifold X is uniform if and only if if there exists a Hermitian metric omega such that its rich curvature is RC positive, that means it has at least one positive angle value at each point. They are equivalent, okay. Uh, this result, we will talk about a little bit about this proof. It's based on a weak version of the Gadan style Gostendik Kodaiva theorem, this, this, this proof, okay. We will go through it uh, later. This is about the characterization of unit manifold by using the simple notion RC positivity. Okay, this is the left bundle version. Let's go to the vector bundle version of RC positivity. A Hermitian vector bundle EH over a complex manifold X is called RC positive. This is the generalization of the left bundle case if at each point Q in X and for each long zero vector along the vector bundle version, that means we fix that long zero vector along the vector bundle, then the one one form is RC positive, means there exists some long zero vector U such that this parent is a positive. It's nothing but that I mean here, fix the vector u, then it gives uh, one one form on the complex manifold. We require this one one form is RC positive, means it has one positive angle value at least. There is a slightly stronger version notion called uniform RC positivity. So this notion is like continuity and the uniform continuity means there exists some vector u, okay, which is independent of v in the previous definition that u may depend on that, that u, okay, here u may depend on the v, but here u is independent of v, okay, this is called the uniform RC positivity. 
sense for left and right, there is one direction, okay, just left and one direction. RC positivity and the uniform RC positivity are equivalent. Okay, let's look at some examples of for such uh, notions. Exam examples of R3 positive tangent bundles, we can say it's obvious that this notion is a generalization of positive holomorphic section curvature. Indeed, it's a, a little bit more general than that. For instance, for bundle manifolds, we can show that its tangent bundle must be RC positive. And we, have, we also have many other examples. For example, manifolds with positive section chain rich curvature, hop manifolds, complex manifolds with a holomorphic, positive holomorphic section curvature, and the products of such manifolds. We also have some examples about uniform RC positive tangent bundles, killer manifolds with holomorphic section curvature, final manifolds with non negative holomorphic section curvature, and the hope of manifolds and the products of such manifolds. Okay, this is some classical examples. So, so far, do you have any question? Okay, if there is no question, let's continue, okay? Uh, the first uh, quick results about I, uniform I, I RC positive. Question? Yes? Uh, so, in your theorem about this unirudeness and RC positivity, yes, you, you can only get a Hermitian metric. Can you get a Keller yes. metric? Uh, this is a very good question. For a Keller metric, in fact, by your theorem, we can solve for a Keller metric. It does not matter. Just because the rich curvature, we fix the rich curvature, then we can find a, another Keller metric which can realize this rich curvature and then the same thing. Yeah, just a good okay. question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just like the peripheral result, we can change it to a killer metric. It does not matter, okay? Subject to your result. Thanks. Okay, let's go to the first quick results. If X is compact killer manifold, if it has a Hermitian metric such that its tangent bundle or the curvature is uniform RC positive, then we can show that the manifold is projective and rationally connected. In particular, we can show X is simply connected just because we, everyone knows that rationally connected manifolds are simply connected. Yes. This result also works for certain quasi positive curvature case, but not for all, okay? Uh, we also have a conjecture. This is also, uh, this also the name Rest RC positivity. We expect that for a projective manifold, X is rationally connected. It should be equivalent to that the holomorphic tangent bundle is RC positive or uniform RC positive. This is our expectation. This is why I call this metric RC positivity. So I just want to give a characterization of you uh, rationally connecting manifold by using a curvature notion, okay? So here we prove that the metric positivity can imply rational connectedness. For the other way around, we have a partial answer for it. That means suppose X is rationally connected, then there exists a uniform RC positive Fenster metric on X. So we can find a Fenster metric on rationally connected manifold. But so far, I don't know how to improve such a Fenster metric to a Hermitian one. Okay, this is about basic properties on rationally connected manifolds and uniform RSA positivity. Okay. Let's go to the proofs of such a result briefly. So let's, at first, let's recall a theorem given by Gadan Sarah Kostenti Kalaira, okay? It states that for a projective manifold, if one has this asymptotic vanishing theorem for such a power, here the vanishing range is from one to n, okay? It's like the Kalaira vanishing theorem, okay? It's equivalent to that L is ample, L, or L is positive. That means the rich character has a M positive angle values here, N is the complex dimension of the complex manifold. 
OK. This is the theorem given by Gadan style Krostendik and also Kodaira. So it's a natural question that how about the for smaller Q, for example, Q from one to n minus one or from one, something like that. Can we have similar result? This is a very natural question proposed by uh, many mathematicians, notably by Android and Grout. Okay, we will talk about more later. So uh, important step in our proof is the following equivalence on general complex manifolds. It states that if the dual light band of L is not pseudo effective, then it's equivalent to say that L is RC positive, means the rich character has at least one positive eigenvalue. Okay. This is the technical one. The proof is not hard. Yeah. By using this result, we have a weak dual version of the Gadan cell for sending Kodaira theorem. It says that if we have one vanishing theorem, if we have one vanishing cohomology like the previous one, then it's equivalent to say that the dual light bundle is not, in, not so effective and the L is RC positive. Okay, this is the weaker version. Let's talk about a little bit about the history. From three to one, it's given by Andrew Lee and Grout in 1964. They can prove more general, means if we have Q positive eigenvalues, then we have Q vanishing theorems. They want to know what the converse, I mean, the direction from one to three, from vanishing theorem to construct some positive metric. For the surface case, it's proved by Masmura, probably in 2015 or 14, something like that. Then my EP Niles later and Todaro, they want to prove this result by using some general theory. Unfortunately, uh, Autumn, Christine Autumn, construct some kind of examples for general Q. I mean, Q from some range, I cannot remember, it's like from Q to M minus, M minus two or something like that. Okay. This is about the weak deal, Gadan style cross Kodaira theorem. Let's look how to use this result to prove Yaw's conjecture. Okay. In fact, we just uh, translate the pos positivity of holomorphic section of curvature into RC positivity. Okay, we obtain that if the killer metric has a positive holomorphic section of curvature, then we can show the wedge product of holomorphic tangent bundle is RC positive and it has some vanishing cohomology of P0 type. And also the holomorphic tangent bundle is uniform RC positive. Okay, similar results are used by Li Zhen and Masumura on projected manifolds. Okay, so let's look how to translate positivity of holomorphic section curvature into RC positivity. It depends on a minimal principle. We do the variation. We can get the, the following formula along a minimal, ver, minimal vector E1, okay? We can get this curvature formula. It's very easy to say that if the holomorphic section curvature is a positive, then we get the RC positivity. This given E1 is given. Here W is arbitrary. That means if the holomorphic section curvature is positive, then the holomorphic tangent bundle is uniform RC positive. Here E1 is given. W is arbitrary, okay? Uh, let's briefly, let's give the proof of Yacht's conjecture briefly, okay? So the first step is that the minimal principle for holomorphic section curvature gives the positivity of the white product, RC positive white product, and also the vanishing of H to zero. This is the first very beginning step. And then the second step, we can use Kodaya's result and show X is projective. The next step is one of the key ingredients. We can prove such a valid theorem. In fact, it is obtained by conformal method in non-killer geometry. 
and the vect bundle version of the Gadang style cross-tending Kalaira theorem we stated before. Okay, this is the key issue. So the, the, the step four is the key issue. And then we can show any invertible shift L of the shift of P forms. We can show invertible shift here is not only in light bundles. We need the invertible shifts just because the rational kinetics is a concept uh, invariant by blowing up or something like that. Okay, this is why we need the invertible shift. And then by a theorem of Kampala, Damaya, and Pitanel, and also using Grab, Harris, and Stars, Redos, and rational connect list, we can show X is rationally connected. Okay, this is the basic proof. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, if there is no question, let's continue. Okay. So by RC positivity, we also have some other applications. So the first one is the following inversion. Looks very, very strange, okay? But it's natural, okay? It says that for a compact killer manifold, if there is a Hermitian metric on the background manifold and the Hermitian metric, possibly they are different on the holomorphic tangent bundle, such a trace, the, uh, the term, the term after trace is an endomorphism on the holomorphic tangent bundle. Okay, if it is a positive definite, it's just like the young mirror setting, then we can show X is projective and rationally connected. In fact, this result is a generalization of the classical result of Campana, Kola, Miyoka, Murray that final manifolds are rationally connected. Just because if the metric is killer, then this this term is nothing but the rich curvature, okay? Then by using your results, we can show that the final manifolds are rationally connected, okay? But here in general, such manifolds are not necessarily um, follow, okay? We have many examples, just like uh, manifolds uh, with stable tangent bundle and with positive slope, we can get, get, get this condition, but they are not necessarily final, it's well known, okay? So let's recall your result again. Uh, we want to propose the following characterization of rationally connected manifolds. So your result says that if X is final, then there is the Hermitian metric with first positive, first chain rich curvature. Here we call the first chain rich curvature means the trace to get the one one form. The second chain rich curvature is the trace to get the endomorphism. They are different if the metric is not killer, okay? This is what we want to propose. So we want to give a differential geometric characterization of rationally connected manifold. But here, I don't know how to prove it so far, just because the equation here, I mean, this equation is not the regular one. It's not like the regular one, like the regular Monyam type equations, okay? This is about the, my expectation on the second chain rich curvature, okay. So in the last 15 minutes, I will go to give some applications of RC positivity, which is inspired by our professor results. Okay, the first one is about the rigidity, RC positivity and the rigidity of holomorphic maps. Uh, suppose here X and Y are two compact complex manifolds and F is a holomorphic map. Uh, the general philosophy of short lemma can imply the following type of new well, new following new type theorem. That means holomorphic maps from certain positively curved manifolds to negatively curved manifolds must be constant. This is a general philosophy. But in general, we cannot determine what's the positive curvature notion or negative curvature notion. Okay. Let's recall briefly a classical result of, of Yao. This is also given by Chen Lu type inequality. It says that if F is a holomorphic map between two complex manifolds, if the domain manifold M is compact and the rich curvature, we can say the first chain rich curvature is positive, 
and the target has non-positive holomorphic bisecting character, then such a map must be constant. I think everyone know this know the proof of this guy. Just the, okay, set here, we have the partial energy density called the partial F or EF. Then we can take Laplacian, compute the Laplacian, and then we have two curvature terms. The first term is the trace. Is, uh, the first term is the trace of the domain. The second term is the target, curvature of the target. And then by the sign, we can show it is holomorphic. Of course, there are many important generalizations along this line. Say, the aim is to relax in the curvature conditions on the domain and also the target, okay? So we have many results. For example, the re re result given by Royden and some, some others, okay? There is a well-known question to generalize your theorem. For instance, so if F is a holomorphic map between two complex manifolds, can we relax the curvatures of rich curvature of the domain and the holomorphic bisection curvature of the target into holomorphic section curvature? I think this is a well-known problem in the literature, okay? Here, look that. There are many Calabial manifolds, for example, project P3 surface and the manifold of general type clinical surface in P3, they can contain rational curves. That means the curvature on the target cannot be arbitrary, means you cannot put the rich curvature on the target, okay? For example, if the rich curvature of the target is negative, it can contain rational curve. Of course, the rational curve has positive curvature in any type. On the other hand, it's well known that the classical method and the Royden's trick cannot work in this general setting just because our metric are very general. It's just a complex metric, Hermitian metric, not necessarily killer, okay? This is the difficulty in, uh, in this question, okay? Recently, we introduced the following type called partial debar allergy density. In general, let's recall, the general density, allergy density here U is defined on the domain manifold M, but here the general, the general left allergy density is defined on the projective bundle, not on M. Each negative average metric, let's look at this part, the average part here W, is the homo uh, homogeneous coordinate on the fiber of M is on the tangent bundle, okay, the homogeneous coordinate. It's very easy to say that if the domain M has complex dimension one, it is exactly here, this energy density is exactly the classical energy density. That's because here the index is just one dimensional, we can get the inverse, okay. This is just the motivated from harmonic maps from a rational curve P1 to N, okay? From rational curve to, to N. So this is our general philosophy. We want to investigate uh, rational curves in some manifolds with very general curvature condition. This is our motivation. So we just consider the simplest case for dimension M is one P1, P1 case. Another motivation for this allergy density is given by Levick or Cynic spectral sequence in algebraic geometry. This is why this term becomes, okay? Why this term becomes. <clears throat> we will show later, okay? And there are many applications of this allergy density and we can run the field of harmonic map theory by using this allergy density. We can run the whole theory, okay? So for instance- Hi, uh, Yes. Can can you explain this notation a bit more? I, I got lost. So what is this, this, this in the definition of this uh, generalized partial energy density? Yes. So here, uh, Gij is the curvature of the targets. Hr gamma delta is the curvature of the domain. Okay, uh, is the metric of the domain. W is a homogeneous coordinate on the fiber, 
Okay, this is the homogeneous coordinate on the fiber of Tm. Okay, here. And then we can define Sorry, this. This, this should define on, on, on what? On this projective bundle? On the projective bundle, yes. So you have a map. Um, oh, yes, M, map. M, is a, M is a source, okay, I see. Uh, M is a source, yeah. M is a source, yes. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a point plus a tangent vector. Yes, yes, you're right, yeah. I see, okay, thank you. Okay, it's just the, just the average of the, average of the, 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 the domain, yes. Okay, so we can define, we can also define RC positivity for remaining manifold by using our previous setting, just because it's purely linear algebraic, okay? So we can define RC positive for remaining manifold or something like that. So for instance, we can show that if a compact remaining manifold which has negative RC positive tangent bundle, then it has no non-trivial Killian field. The classical result says that if a compact remaining manifold has negative rich curvature, then it has low non-trivial Killian vector, then we can generalize it to RC negative tangent bundle. Okay. We can also do the ratio of the energy functional, this functional on the projective bundle. We can also do it. Okay. That means we can run the theory of harmonic map. Okay, let's look at our first application. So by using this energy density, we can take a Hessian, we can do a negative one D bar, this energy density, and then we, get, we can get a very nice formula, very clean formula. We can see that this is something like the curvature of the topological lab bundle. Okay, topological lab bundle, Okay, I just want to say it's a topological lab bundle of T TM. The particular case, the interesting case is the domain. We can so, so the target. Okay, this is the character of the target. We can say this is a nice pairing. Okay, this pairing just like an average pairing. So we can deal with holomorphic section of curvature. Then by using the above estimate and also the maximal principle in the a hashing setting, we can prove the previous question. Means if we have a holomorphic map between two Hermitian manifold, suppose M is compact and it has a positive holomorphic section of curvature, the target has non-positive holomorphic section curvature, then F must be a holomorphic map. Just because here we can deal with holomorphic section of curvature. Okay. We have a average, so we can deal with the holomorphic section of curvature. This is the, the first version. We can say that our setting is on a this number P, so we can use conformal change method. We can do a conformal change on this energy density Y. We can multiply a global defined holomorphic function into the phi and get a new energy density and get a new metric and ontological lab and we can do the same thing. That means we can relax the Hermitian metric, we can reduce it into some more general metric like the following inversion. It says that if M from M to N is a holomorphic map between two complex manifolds, if the toroidic lie bundle in this version, okay, this version is RC positive and the target has an F cotangent bundle, we can show F is constant. The key point here, the key advantage here is that we can only we can require less means that this topological lab bundle is RC positive. It's a very weak condition. Or it is equivalent to say that the holomorphic tangent band of M has a Finster metric with RC positive curvature. They are more or less equivalent. Okay. That means we can deal with Finster metric by using the complex hashing, uh, com complex hashing equation uh, estimate. Okay, this is the advantage. We can also get, we can also prove some similar results for harmonic maps between remaining manifold and the killer manifold. Just the, we can reduce by using a similar method. Okay, we do not state here, but our technique can deal with such uh, maps. For example, if the topological lab bundle of the domain is 
RC positive in this sense, and the target has non-positive complex section curvature, and the map here, we can require it to be harmonic, we can get the similar results, like F is a constant. We can deal with a remaining case, okay. Of course, we can say that all of these results are purely analytic. We do not use anything in algebraic geometry. Since our metric are Hermitian and our manifold just a complex manifold, okay? If, okay, a special case we can talk about a special case is that if F from M to N is a homomorphic map, and M is compact and the tangent matrix are say positive, the holomorphic section, bisection curvature of the target is non-positive, then we can show F is constant. This is a little bit clean. Recall that the tangent bundle is RC positive. We have many examples. For example, complex manifolds with uh, positive holomorphic section character follow manifolds. Here, follow manifolds is the case of Yaw's result, okay? And the products of some, some other manifolds, okay? That means we indeed get a larger category of rigidity. Okay, this is about using analytic method to deal with some rigidity results. If we can, if we are allowed to use rational connectives in algebraic geometry, we can get more. For instance, we can require the target is Kovach hyperbolic. That means we here, if the target is Kovach hyperbolic, there is no good metric on the target, okay, N. There is no smooth formation metric with something like negative curvature or non-positive curvature. We do not have such metric at all, okay? But if we can use rational connected, we, we can prove the rigidity. So in particular, we can get the following results, which seems to be a little uh, interesting. So, if F is a holomorphic map between two compact complex manifolds, if the domain has a positive holomorphic section curvature and the target is a Kovach hyperbolic, we can show that F is constant. Okay, this is a quick application of our pre previous that in previous without that, if a compact killer manifold has a positive holomorphic section curvature, then it's rationally connected, means any two points can be connected by a rational curve. And then if we choose two points and look at the image and the F, then we can say it must be a point just because if the target is quite hyperbolic, it contains no rational curve at all. Okay, this is the brief proof. And our stop uh, is stopped here, okay? Thank you. <laughs>